We are back. The big year. Time for a 2023 first quarter update video. This is a significant year for us and it's time for an update video for the first quarter of 2023. We understand the importance of delivering on our promises this year. And as we're finalizing the tweaks and conducting tests, we didn't want to keep you waiting for the next trailer release. Therefore, we decided to showcase what we've accomplished in the build-up to the release, while keeping things relatively spoiler-free. So this is our first for the year. Expect more later in 2023. Till our big trailer. Welcome back to Old Blighty. Let's mix it up and let's take a look at some new guns, shall we? All headed by Niha, we've teased both of these before, but never shown them in game. First up, the Viper Mark I. It's a prototype bullpup weapon and a variant of the Sten. It was specifically designed to be fired one-handed from the hip, making it compact but very powerful weapon for personal defense. Historically, the intended users of the Viper were motorcycle messengers in Allied-occupied Germany. Despite its potential, the Viper was never put into production. We changed that. The Mark I variant is constructed from parts of a Sten, housed within a wooden clamshell. It lacks any iron sights or forend and is designed solely for hip fire. The only other variant has iron sights and a conventional stock. However, it still maintains the ultra-compact dimensions necessary for one-handed firing. Beautiful weapon made by Schuburgler. Introducing the Laser Lewis Gun, a modernized version of the First World War era light machine gun. Originally designed in the United States, but later mass-produced in the United Kingdom, the Lewis gun was widely used by British Empire troops during the war. With our own unique atom punk twist, this Laser Lewis gun now boasts a variety of firing modes with a distinct atom punk flair. Take out yours and gooify your enemies in style with this timeless classic reinvented for a new era. Another great weapon, this one made by Sobolev Maxim. That's that all sorted. I'll speak with you at the end about when we shall reveal the reveal date. A reveal for the reveal? Exciting. Till then, is more 3D. Hi guys, I'm Charlie, a member of the 3D team. Keeping this quick, let's see some of the other new assets and Fallout London specific items that we can share with you. Firstly, we have the newly improved items which are seen on the UK roads. While the signage may not be something that you would typically associate with Britain, it would be sacrilege to see the vanilla Fallout 4 ones in London. Therefore, Sunny Delight has devoted a considerable amount of effort to creating and completing the roadwork kit that reflects the team's commitment to make everything truly unique. Moving on to our next item, we have something that's a big deal for the Fallout and Bethesda gaming communities, ladders. While many other games have featured ladders, it has always been a bit of a challenge for Bethesda games. Although they teased the addition of ladders in Starfield, we are pleased to announce that we have them in Fallout London. These ladders, designed by Nahir, have been fully animated to work for both NPCs and players, allowing them to go up and down. They're already available on the Nexus for you to enjoy. Check them out in the link below. In our next reveal, we're excited to share that we showcased on our last video and revealed on our Discord, can you guess what it is yet? Well, it's a motorbike and a sidecar. The Boudicca B and the Boudicca 78S are modern, reliable motorcycles used by the British Royal Armoured Corps. These babies fit with the larger Law 2, featured in Fallout 1. The US National Guard also used several of these motorcycles during the quarantine period just before the war. These were made by Edge UK90. These images are of the high poly renders. Don't be too overwhelmed though. These were optimized and integrated into the engine and now look like this. The bike boasts a 78 horsepower engine that runs on small energy cells and has a small amount of storage space the back of the sidecar. We couldn't resist showing off these beautiful pictures, showcasing our interpretation of the Pudica 70AS. Lovely work guys, I'll move you on to the scripting department now. Hello there, I'm Alibaba, I'm a lead scripter here at Fallout London. Let's take a closer look at some of those new and exciting scripting features we've incorporated. It's not all about ladders and swimming, we've also brought in some systems from other games in the series. Firstly, we have radial quest markers that display the area where the quest takes place similar to Fallout 76. No more annoying radio blips like in Fallout 4, now it's beautifully displayed on the UI. New UI elements can be difficult to implement in a game engine like Creation Engine, because they require a deep understanding of its architecture and how it handles those elements. The engine may not have been designed to accommodate certain types of UI elements or interactions, which can require significant modification to its code. But no worries, 
we managed to get the special help of Nyanka to do all of that. We've also implemented a unique timer system just like in Fallout 1. Better drown and escape before the timers run out. Who knows what might happen? It's worth remembering that creating new UI elements often involves designing new art assets and animations, which can be time-consuming and require specialized skills. Luckily, Saffron Rice, Yeti and her 2D team have been blasting through all of the hardcraft too. That's all for now. Sorry that's all I can show. Most of our bits and bobs are spoilers otherwise, so I'll pass you on to the 2D team. Hey everyone, it's me again, Yeti. No more speaking about rare truths this time, today I'm going to show you some of the last bits of unrevealed art for the mod. This time it's the billboard signage. These wonderful little artworks were made by Cheru Miami to fit on our signage boards that go with the Easy Tea Company. It's a pre-war company which sold tea, enough said. Harry Skingle is up next showing off the football world which the UK is known for, as well as the BBM, our version of the BBC. Lastly, and whilst I never condemn smoking, we have some signage done by Soup Kitchen based around the smokable in-game Victory Cigarettes. These people really have been blasting through all of our in-game signage. Everything really blends together to give that London vibe. That's me, I'll pass you on to the media team. Hey everyone, I'm Jeff, video guy and part of the media team. I'm here with a media alert for you all. The Mysterious Stranger has been an iconic element of the Fallout franchise for as long as we can remember. However, the current iteration just didn't quite hit the mark for us. Therefore, we decided to give it a British twist to fit in more with the United Kingdom's theme. Have a listen. We are delighted with the end result, as you can hear the Bond-style theme mixed with some legally distinct goodness. We're proud of this little stinger and invite you to listen to more of our tracks and our stingers on our YouTube channel. Also, be sure to check out the links below as we'll be uploading them to our SoundCloud too. As we near the final stages of the mod, all of the NPCs and spoilers are now in place, which makes it difficult to showcase the various level design pieces without giving too much away. Therefore, this time, we'll have to present that amazing level design by Wolfie's level design team as a montage set to the wonderful music created by our media team. This way, we can ensure that your story experience isn't ruined by any unintended spoilers. Enjoy! Hi folks, Danske the lead of media and voice acting here to give you our first update on the voice acting department. First and foremost, I would like to say a warm thanks to all those who have applied thus far, and I've seen too personally that every application gets the attention they deserve for consideration and in being invited on our team. I've been blown away by the amount of talent that is in our community, and I look forward to working with the approved applicants. I would like to kindly remind you that our closing date is the 31st of March, where chosen applicants will receive their acceptance email around this time. If you haven't been selected, don't fret, as I must say the volume of applicants we received was immense and we couldn't accept everybody. This period of time is crucial as we are organising which voice actors will fit into which role and we aim to make this process as seamless as possible for ourselves and for the voice actors. I look forward to giving you updates in the future, although it will be without spoilers in the coming months. I thank you all for your time and I'll hand you over to Letitia for the wrap up of this quarterly. That's a wrap everyone. 
We hope you've enjoyed our first quarter 2023 development update. If you want more, join our Discord. There are plenty more leaks on the Discord, so come drop by and see them. As always, feel free to leave your comments and hatred in the comment section below. We publish new content as often as we can, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. We've been working with some big names behind the scenes, some which we simply can't announce due to NDA and that boring legal side. However, due to these events, we aim to reveal the reveal near to our next quarter meeting. I know, I know. Some of you are frothing at the mouth for this. We are too. But we'll get there. Promise. We love you all. We promise to shed some more light on the release date next quarter. I'm Letitia, and as always, thank you so much for watching. We'll see you again soon. Stay safe and remember, mind the gap.